I have to tell you something right now, and then we'll just tell me the thing. We'll just hang up, and then we'll we'll come back and do the rest of the episode later. Okay, so this is a grappler, right? Yeah, you know it. I've been begging for one of these for like five episodes, and every time you're like, "No, I hate your stupid grappler song." I mean, you've never said that, but it's how I felt. So I have the first topic for the grappler, and it's what's happening to me right now. Literally, there is a possum on the loose in this house. What? I am. <laughs> I'm not Are you a- on a mobile microphone? Can you chase it while we talk? I do not. Know. I don't know where it's at. That's the problem. How does that happen? <laughs> and also, great job shooting down Southern stereotypes. By the way, thank you. So He's knocking it out. <laughs> so this grill is a- that thing up later and take it down another notch. Was I right or wrong? It was worth turning on mics right now, is it not? Oh my goodness, yes. So here's the situation. I'm over here the other night, me and Trent are editing, and we get a text. I'm going to read this text. Okay. From my awesome wife. The text is as follows. You cannot write this stuff. Reminder, babysitting possum drop off tonight at 7.30. Her name is Corndog. She lives in Steve's tub. He will be flying to Miami tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) oh there's so much happening (laughs) what (laughs) yeah so apparently my my wife (laughs) has coordinated okay an opportunity for me to babysit a a possum named corn dog (laughs) (laughs) we were so freaking hard to name my chinchilla and someone came up with corn dog they're better than the entire internet at naming animals. Okay. Well, well I mean, the okay. possum likes corn dogs, so that's pretty easy, right? <laughs> so anyway, sure. He brings over corn dog, and just who like, lives not, in a bathtub? Who lives in a bathtub? He just walk it walks well, up the door, like, like winking, hey, man. blinking, and nod. How's okay. it going, man? Uh, I was like, hey, what's up, Steve? He's like, oh yeah, here's. So I got the I got the possum. I was like, all right. <laughs> he said, I'll, I'll bring it in, and he brings in this possum. And it's weird. We're sitting here talking about this possum, and, and it's it's loose in the house. I don't know where it's at. So he's, he said, here's the deal. I know you do smarter every day, and I know you like to learn about animals. I raise abandoned possums. Like if their mom gets hit on the road or something like that, the babies are really, really cute. They're really interesting animals. They've got more teeth than any other animal, 50 teeth. They've got, like, and he starts telling me all these possum facts. And I'm like, okay, what, what, uh, what do I do here? Oh, just whatever. You can just let her go whenever you want. So she's crawling up on my shoulder and stuff like that. They're really cute, but their poop really stinks. It's really, really bad. It's very musky. They're a marsupial, right? Yeah, they're a marsupial. They have 13 nipples. They have a pouch. Sure. Stuck my hand in the pouch. That was interesting. That's 10 more than you've got. (laughs) It is. So Trent and I were like, okay, we're going to edit, and then we're going to put corn dog in the bathtub. So we built this little fence thing for corn dog. Out of like plywood and stuff, and we got some of these rice bags. And Steve's like, "Oh yeah, she'll never get out of that. Everything's great." I was like, "Are you serious?" He's like, "Yeah." It's like, "Don't they climb trees?" He's like, "They're good, man." Just he said, "I'll tell you what. I'll go get her bucket for you." What are you talking about? And he goes, "Yeah, here's her bucket." And he gives us a trash can and puts a towel in it, and she just gets down in there like Oscar the Grouch and like sticks her head out of it, and that's just where she sits. I was like, "What a what do I feed her?" He's like, I don't know. She ate a piece of pizza this morning. You can eat her whatever you want. Yeah, she lives in a trash can. Just fill it with what it's for. I, my head is spinning. And I didn't see this coming. A couple questions. Yeah. Who is Steve? Steve is this guy that used to go to church with us when we lived in a different city. And um, he was going down to stay with his dad for a little while somewhere. And he's like, hey. This possum is ready to release. He's been trying to give me this possum for a while, and I've always been like, that can't be real. And then, sure enough, Steve knocks on the door and just walks in with a possum. He's like, yeah, man, just you know, let her go whenever you want. It doesn't really matter. She's ready to be released. I'm like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll let her go. And so the plan was to spend one night with, with Corn Dog, get to know her just a little bit. I don't like the way that sounded. Okay. <laughs> just see what was up and learn a little bit about possums and then just go let her go. And then I came home at lunch today. She imprinted on your house. She's not here, dude. She's there. She's here somewhere. And so I'm texting my wife, hey, what did you do with corn dog? She's like, ha ha, whatever. I was like, no, I'm I'm serious. Where is corn dog? And she's like, quit quit making fun of me. I'm like, 
I need to know where this possum is right now because their poop stinks. And so you've been in that hall bathroom there. You know, you know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, and I've been in there when it stunk. Exactly. And so what we're trying to figure out now is where she went because the door was shut. She was in the tub. She was in her little trash can. And there's a hole because we have that toilet off right now. Oh, here's my wife. Hey, come here, baby. Here's my daughter. Come here. Right here. I want you to talk into this little thing. This is called a microphone. Okay. Oh, hey, kiddo. Hi. I haven't talked with you for a while. You want to say hello to Mr. Matt? I'm Mr. Matt. Hey, Squirt. I miss you. How are things? I miss you, too. Did you miss him, too? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My kids miss you, too. Do you want to go try to find the possum while I talk to Mr. Matt? Yeah. Okay. Have you met Corn Dog already? Did you meet the possum, Corn Dog? Uh, no, I didn't. I'm gonna go find it. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Attention. Don't get scarred. Go find emotionally. It. Can we just take take a minute to appreciate that? No, no, let me take a time out real quick here. <laughs> yeah. Are you sending your tiny, adorable, yellow-haired little daughter <laughs> off? To look for a potentially rabid marsupial it's not rabid. in the nooks and crannies of your home? You don't know that. It's not rabid. You don't it w- know that. It was raised from a little one. It would have had hydrophobia by now. I don't know, man. I was about to say, let's take a minute and appreciate the fact that my children are raised to the point where I can just say, like, hey, go over the possum. And they're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there's a secret surprise somewhere in the house. It sounds like the kind of game that Dwight Schrute would have been subjected to when he was a child. I'm listening for shrieking. Okay, that's it. I just wanted to share that with you. Can we get <laughs> can we get back to the grabbler after this? I mean, you've got to go yes. like work on your stuff, right? Nothing will live up to this. Hey, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find Corn Dog. Okay. And I want you to give me an update when we record the rest <laughs> of this episode. My daughter's crawling under the bed looking for Corn Dog. <laughs> she understands that there's. An opossum under there, possibly, right? We dropped the O. Does she know what they look like? We dropped the O. It's just possum. I mean, you could say opossum, but... But it is an opossum, correct? It is correct. You guys just put an apostrophe where the O goes? It is correct, yes, yes. Okay. I need to go do this, um, not really because it has to be done, but because my wife's here and I have to go, like, (laughs) give the appearance that I'm taking charge of the situation. (laughs) I'm... You get it, right? I'm... I really like envisioning the rhythm of your life yeah dude it's weird it's really weird i'm gonna hang up you go do the grabbler intro or whatever well okay all right uh bye. bye hey it's me matt i'm just still here alone every now and then we do these grabbler episodes you might not know what grabbler means if you haven't been around here for a while it's a thing where we each pick a few topics and then surprise each other with them and it's like a, a grabbling I don't really know how grabbling describes what it is, but that's the name. And so now we're going to go do that. Okay, here we go. Grabbler. I have a a dumb question. Are there those? Why do guitars still exist? Pardon? Why do guitars still exist? Because of their awesome? What are you driving at? My point is, they're really hard to learn how to play, right? No, I won't concede that. I've never learned how to play. You could be a functional guitar player in a month. So here's the question. We can make superior music now with computers, right? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, go just round out the line of thinking. Go ahead. (laughs) Well, I mean, my thought is we can make music through simpler methods now. So... Well, why are there still guitars? Furthermore, we've always had stringed instruments, like as far as humans exist, right? Right. This kind of leads into history nugget. This would make a great history nugget. But the question is, how did guitars get to what they are, and why did they still exist if we can make superior music without them now? And it takes a long time to learn how to do the guitar what? thing. I don't know. It's a dumb. You've got some backing up to do on the word superior. It's superior in what way? It's a. I told you it was a dumb question, man. I don't know. I don't know much about music. No, no, no. You don't get to backpedal like that. No, 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 no. How do you think the music that we make with robots is superior to playing an actual stringed instrument? Because it can be timed more perfectly. 
is it the sloppiness what makes guitar music good? Is that is that what it is? Is guitar music sloppy? I don't know. I'm just asking questions, man. Okay, all right. Just, okay, you, all just, right. Uh, you just check your face hole. In, oh, in, <laughs> what, you went to the face hole. What, okay, I'll have you know one thing, Can sir. I, I thought this was you a safe place. You use the term place. face hole for anything other than a place where food goes. You've overstepped your bounds already. I thought this was yeah. a safe place, and I could just really ask did we questions. establish that ever at any point? No, have we established that? It just okay. I feel a little bit defensive because I feel like you're making some assumptions, and there are sayings about that. Okay, let me reframe this. Yeah, imagine that I'm a stupid person. I know that's hard for you to imagine. Very. Specifically, I'm stupid in the area of music. Okay. I, I, again, I know this is going to be hard for you to pretend that this is the case. Okay. Help me understand why we still cut down trees and we we make boxes out of them. The trees are your concern. And we pull metal strings across them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand the physics of guitars. Like, I understand the linear density of the strings, and I understand I the different harmonics, and I understand, like, if you if you tune one string, that's great, but because of the tension in the neck, you've also took your other strings out of tune. I understand all that, because it's the net okay. total st- tension across all of the strings at the same time that's required to get everything. In t- I, I get all that. It seems like a lot of hassle. Why are we still doing that? Okay, I think that is a fair question. Your initial phrasing put me back on my heels a little bit because there were just so many final declarations of how things are in your initial framing that it almost felt like I needed to defend music or art for a minute. Your second framing puts this to me a little differently, and I apologize for my initial defensive reaction. This is a safe place. And you can always say whatever you need to. <laughs> You're just going to roll with that. I'm okay, just waiting for right. an answer is all I'm, I'm waiting for. Okay, here, here's the answer. Have you heard Cashmere by Led Zeppelin? I probably have. I don't I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know that yep. one? I wouldn't call it a sloppy mess, but the thing about Led Zeppelin that's fun is it does breathe a little bit. You know the immigrant song that was in Thor? I don't know names of things, man. You would know it if you heard it. Okay. I'm not going to keep butchering their songs by singing their guitar lines. These songs, part of what makes them awesome is that they can do that for real. Those guys can all get together and say, go and play that stuff. And so there is a human element to it, and it totally works. And even when it's not perfectly precise, they are so in tune with each other and you can be so in tune as a listener that you feel that momentary rush to get to the front end of the beat instead of being right on top of the beat like you probably should be. There's tiny, tiny microscopic fumbles here and there that just become part of what the song is and and it works. And these are songs about humanity and the humanity of it really plays and is reinforced by that. So that's one reason to keep making instruments and performing actual music. But at the same time, I get what you're saying. Precision also communicates a meaning. Like You know, Baroque music was meant to communicate the order of creation. And so you've got these elaborate pipe organ suites. Is that even the right term? I don't even know what you call them. Harpsichords, right? Yeah, harpsichords and organs, Bach, you get the deal. Precision. Well, the rock, the classic rock equivalent of that might be Boston. You know the song Four Play, Long Time? It's like two songs in one. Probably. It's been such a long time. Think I should be going. That one? Time doesn't wait for me. I, don't, I yes? actually don't remember that one now. Okay, well, Boston's awesome. Okay. And that has no mistakes. Line it up against a computer. It's the same thing. The human precision involved in that Boston workshop is incredible. And it's a delight just to take in how perfect it is. So one of your initial suggestions was that the precision is maybe one reason that instruments like this don't make sense anymore. I would just say some people do incredibly precise things with it, and it's amazing. Stuff that's precise as a computer and other people do intentionally slightly sloppy things with it 
That's also amazing. So before I throw out other stuff, I'll just hear what you think about that. Am I, am I making any sense or is this stupid stuff? Yeah, I get all that. I'm just wondering, like, I don't know. It's, it's a thing that's been passed down for ages, right? We can read about stringed instruments and in ancient documents. Oh, yeah. You, you know, we got to this industrial revolution and we obtained the ability to make pianos, which are ways to create more precise stringed instruments. And now we're to the point where we can, you know, do it even better than that. And now we're at synthesizers and things like that. But we're hanging on to the guitar. I think that's kind of more my question. Like, we're better than that now, but we still hang on to the guitar or the string instrument that a human individual plays with two hands. And there's something about that in the human story that we're not willing to let go of. I don't think we've replaced what it is. So, okay, uh, have you ever played... So, so, so just... What I just said, think about what I just said, and then and then re-listen to the initial question. Why, yeah, why do guitars it, it, still exist? I think guitars still exist because, one, as I was just arguing, you can't do everything a, a guitar can do on a computer. You just can't. You can fool me sometimes. If I get to listen long enough, I can usually still tell the difference even on a really good emulation of a guitar. But also, what kind of guitar? I mean, there's so many different ways to play it and amplify it and different types of strings that you can play with. And if you go beyond guitar into other stringed instruments, the interaction between the bow and the string and the finger pads is so intimate that you can make that instrument talk if you're an expert at it. There are levels of expression and depth I just don't think we've figured out how to do with a computer at this point. So again, part of the reason I think it's still there is because I really don't think our machines are better than that very intimate, expressive human thing. Do you know the the Howard Shore soundtrack from uh, Lord of the Rings that I brought up with you a couple of times, the Ride of the Rohirrim? Brother, we're, we're going to keep doing this thing where you ask me if I know names of songs, and if I, and I'm just going to keep saying, no, I don't know names of things. Okay, but you've seen Lord of the Rings, right? Yes, sir. And if you said brother and sir, whoa, <laughs> you are feeling mild impatience with no, me. No, I'm, I'm in a really deep place. And then I'm like, oh, wow, I'm hanging on every word. And then you're like, do you remember in volume three of Vladimir's consciousness? The And I'm just like, <laughs> no, no, I'm not. This is, this, I'm talking about a movie that won best picture and that everyone on the planet has seen. This is how you need to talk to me. This This is how you need to talk to me, Matt. Okay. Hey, do you know that thing that goes, you know, that's how you need to talk to me. <laughs> you <went> to dick. <laughs> <laughs> Old times there are not forgotten. That's really great. <laughs> that's how you need to talk to me. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, you know the part where all the people on the horses charge down to save everybody else at the end of the Lord of the Rings trilogy? The Riders of Rohan. Yeah, got yes. it. Yes. And they play that. There's that amazing violin piece right there. Na 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 da 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 dum da 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 dum. Remember that kind of? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's gorgeous. I don't think you can evoke the emotion of that scene with a computer. I think somebody actually touching those strings, understanding the scene, and playing that from the heart. I just still think I still think that human element is real, and I don't think we should want to let go of that i mean it's cool you could touch uh i mean a synthesizer you could you could touch keys on an electronic keyboard at the same tempo and cadence and so why a guitar ultimately ones and zeros it, it's it's really good i i'm not gonna i mean i love i like electronic dance music i like electronic rock i'm a very big fan of of robots being involved in my music. I think just especially the stringed instruments are the most human of all the instruments, the most expressive. And I don't think we're stubbornly hanging on to it. I think we're hanging on to it because we can't do better. And I'm not sure we'll ever be able to do better. Are you in a hurry to get rid of them? No, I just had this flash of realization the other day that we still 
cut down trees. We make boxes out of them. We cut a hole. We thump them to make sure they're at a certain resonance and then pull a string across them. And then we tighten that string to a certain frequency that makes some harmonic with our brain happen. And then we pluck the strings. I mean, it just occurred to me that we have the ability to more precise. I don't know. I think it's a really good question. We also have the ability to throw sticks of dynamite into the trout pond and fish out all of the upside down fish. It would accomplish the goal of getting the fish out. But we don't do that because there's something very human and intimate about interacting with the fish through a rod and a reel or however you like to fish. Likewise, we could make the sound. Just go do a fishing podcast, Matt. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll stop right now. I'm sorry. I've exceeded my fishing Your fishing quota. Per episode. I have, and I feel bad about it. No, you don't. I think this is no, a good question, and I think I'm going to investigate this further. But from the engineering perspective, and as a person who does not play a stringed instrument, I think there's more to this story to unravel here. You know what I have to grant you? What? I don't think the guitar makes sense as a lead instrument anymore. What does? For three, four decades, guitar dominated pop music, rock music. Honestly, I think the synthesizer is the lead instrument of pop and rock music at this point because it can do almost everything and it interacts so much better with the electronic side of what's built into almost all music now. I mean, name a great rock band that's playing right now that's relatively recent that has the traditional guitar, bass, rhythm, drums setup. It's nobody. I mean, I can think of a couple exceptions, but almost nobody. So our tastes, to your point, our tastes are definitely changing, and we are wanting our music to be more reflective of the digital lives we're living, I think. I actually am sorry I got kind of defensive about guitars. That was weird. I don't know why that happened. I regret that. You play guitars. I, I don't know. I just think it's a really interesting question, and I'm going to think. I'm going to continue to think about it. I'm going to tell you this. As we went through this conversation the whole time in my brain, I had decided I was going to tell Tina to edit out the part where I was defensive at the beginning so I wouldn't look stupid, but I think we should leave it. Huh. Whatever. Because it was the truth. It Because I think, I think my reaction is the answer to your question. What do you mean? How dare you get rid of guitars? I play those. And they're beautiful and human and they're important. Your question is offensive. Like, I had a reaction to that. What the heck is the matter with me? That's a fair question you're asking. So there's your answer, because I think maybe people intuitively feel like I do, and like that's somehow a threat. Hmm. I don't know. Destin, what is HelloFresh, and why do you like them? They send food to your house, first of all. That's awesome, right? Which is endearing. We yes. actually got our shipment today. What'd you get? I don't know. We haven't opened it yet. My wife knows, because she ordered it online. But it comes in this big cardboard box, and you open the package, and there's these ice packs in it. And you've got the meat separated out if you choose to get meat because you can also get the veggie veggie method if you want to do that. And then they have these bags on the inside and all the ingredients are in there and you can just take them out and read the card and just cook an awesome meal with your family in a very short amount of time. I like it. I do too. My wife has been on a HelloFresh Mexican food kick of late. I've never had that. That is a thing. Really? I, seriously, whatever they called the one that had the pine, it was like a, it's like some kind of carnita pineapple thing or something. It was phenomenal. And the pineapple was absolutely perfectly fresh as advertised by the name. Because if you get pineapple wrong, that ain't going to work. I mean, like, how do they give you fresh pineapple? Did it come in a can or was it like in a little? No. Yeah. It was like a sealed bag. You've seen how they do that. Yeah. It was great. That's awesome. Ice cold tasted absolutely phenomenal did you cook it no i haven't you know what i haven't helped for a while we've been doing the thing like the 1950s kind of family thing for the last month and a half yeah where i go to work and work kind of long hours and get home right as dinner is going on the table i need to cook more because i actually have fun cooking when i do the hello fresh thing like those are my two deals i'll do the hello fresh and i'll grill like those are the two things that i feel like mentally i can handle <laughs> but I need to get back in the pocket and, and help out more. Dude, I'm laughing, but I'm totally with you, dude. Because like HelloFresh, I can take it out and just read the thing and do it. And I feel, I don't know, it makes me feel like I can, I'm contributing in a really big way. 
I guess because I am I'm cooking dinner for the family, right? Yeah. But I mean, it's like, it's not intimidating. I think that's the deal. It's fun too, because I don't know exactly how this fits, but every time we have HelloFresh, I get kind of a high five from everybody in the family. It's like, hey, thanks for doing that podcast. Because now we know about HelloFresh and we get it. That's awesome. In some little small way, I always get credit from everybody as though I did something. When in reality, some genius at HelloFresh sat down and designed a good meal and then my wife made it for us. But it's good and we like it. I talked to a local farmer that worked with HelloFresh to get the ingredients. Like He specifically worked with poultry and they talk about how they package all the stuff up to get it to all the people here locally. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know how they handle all of their logistics, but what I know is every time we've ordered, it has been on time and packaged right and fresh, and we've never, ever, ever had an issue. I can vouch. And every time we've needed to step away, it's absolutely easy to turn it off until we're ready to turn it back on because we're going to be back in town. So it's a good setup. It is exactly what it claims to be in the name and in what we're saying here. There's some kind of deal going on right now with this, correct? Yeah, here it is. So for a total of $60 off, that's 20 bucks off your first three boxes, visit HelloFresh.com slash NDQ60 and enter NDQ60 at checkout. That's like receiving six meals free or up to 50% off three boxes. It's awesome. So give that a shot. That helps us do this podcast and you get to be the hero of home and bring home really cool meals and like actually home cooked meals for the family. Again, that's for total of 60 bucks off. That's 20 bucks off your first three boxes. Visit HelloFresh.com slash NDQ60 and enter NDQ60 at checkout. Seriously, honestly, it's hard for me to think of something that I can more completely vouch for than this. If you haven't done it yet, do the thing with the promo code. Give it a shot. I I really think you're going to like it. Agreed. Possum update. Destin? Say it again. You left and the door was shut and there was a possum in it. Right. You came back. There was no possum in it, and the door was shut. That's correct. It's in the wall. Because there's a hole in the wall where we, the pipe. Oh, no, it's just a flashlight. I not trust you. Okay, oh, yeah. I'm not going to, like, throw a possum on you. Like, if, if the possum is up in the wall, like, where the heck can it go? There's studs. Do you have your phone? I can use it as a periscope, reverse periscope. This doesn't go all the way to the attic, does it? So, this is a bathroom. Yeah. There is not insulation behind the tub frame, right? Like, meaning when they put a tub frame, there's no sheetrock, there's no... They just put the frame yeah. in. So, there's space. Do sure. I need to go to the attic? You think it... What if I found a place where it crawled out of the attic? Like, crawled into the attic from here? Why is there a litter box? We had the litter box in there for the possum. He said that the possum could use a litter box. I don't understand why you're asking silly questions right now. That I mean, clearly that was for the possum. So we're going to the attic, right? I asked you if you would marry me. I did not make you marry me. <laughs> All right, so. If the door was still shut, it's... This is the option. Somebody got the possum. There's no way. Unless it's in the wall right now. Okay, so I had a staff meeting today where I needed to like chat an, with... Like an infection thing? or No, not <laughs> pH. Oh, okay, got it. No, <laughs> double F kind, but in the good way. And so... If you need to meet with somebody and you live in Lander, Wyoming, what do you do on a nice fall day for a staff meeting? Fishing, duh. That's, that's what you do. Right. That's yeah, what you fishing. do. Yeah. <laughs> it was good, man. So get this. There's this there's this lake that's normally just huge full. You've actually driven by it up there, but you wouldn't remember which one it is. And it is completely empty. I've never seen it drained out like this, but it is. And so I found this little pool right underneath the dam that had no way in and no way out and it was full of fish so i decided that i was going to catch them and i did it was going well but it was tough to to provoke a strike here 
because the fish were really wary. It's kind of warm water. Rainbows don't like super warm water. And so it was a very patient thing, and I was having to hide behind a bush. Do you sneak up on fish when you fish in Alabama? Do you think fish can see out of the water that well? Uh, Yeah, this is a scientific documented fact, man. I can't tell if you're being sarcastic right now. No, this is true. They definitely can. In fact, people have done the math to figure out what the exact angle of approach is to cut under the angle of vision of different species of trout. So depending on what you're hunting, you need to hunch to different levels. Or if you're my height, just walk up boldly. I don't think you're right. Because there's this thing, like if you're down in a pool of water and you look up, Mm -hmm. there's this thing called Snell's window. Have you ever heard of this? I've heard of windows. No, Snell's window. It has to do with the uh, angle of inclination of the light coming out of the top of the water. Google it real quick. Okay. You'll see what I'm talking about. Google bot right here. So Snell's window is like if you're down in the water and you look up, you can see light coming at you from a certain angle, but anything around that, you don't see the sky coming down because of it has to do with the refraction in the water. Right, but in all of these pictures I'm seeing of Snell's window, it's assuming that someone is quite a ways down in the water. Like right here I'm seeing a picture that shows a fisherman at the edge of the water, and this fish or this lens would be maybe three or four feet under the water. Mm -hmm. When you're fly fishing with a surface fly, the fish almost have a fin breaching the water like a shark. Okay. So that's going to change the angle of what they can detect. If you're trying to get deep down into the water, it's a little different. You can just kind of clumsily march up sometimes. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've got some really cool image here of depth versus angle of vision coming out. Yeah, I, I think we're both right here. Are you looking at the graphic that's got like the trout at the very bottom and it's got this inverted jagged rainbow looking thing? No. Oh, but- okay. No, everything I'm seeing here affirms what I've experienced anecdotally, Okay, which is I fish in very shallow water, sometimes as shallow as six inches. That can produce good trout. And if you walk up sloppily, clumsily, I know exactly when they will see me, when they'll make me. I've done this so many times that I know at what distance they don't see me and I can see them and at what distance they do because that's when they scatter. And whether I'm walking on quiet ground or loud ground, it seems like it's the same place they scatter. You said a verb that I didn't understand the usage of. Oh. Make me? Yeah. Like, you know, in spy movies, he made me. No, I've never heard that, really? that usage. No. Really? You've never heard that in like a Hunt for Red October? No, they wouldn't be in that. It's all submarines. But like some kind of Jason Bourne movie or something? No, I've never heard that. Okay. Yeah. This just means that somebody figured out that you were stalking them. Oh, okay. I've been made. Oh. Yeah. Never? Never. Okay. Smarter every day. Yeah. Hey. There you go. So the thing is, they will scatter at the exact same moment every time. So if you're in a certain clarity of water and the fish are at a certain depth and you want to catch them, if the surface isn't disturbed, you got to sneak. And I caught a fish the other day sneaking out in the backyard at work. Like I belly crawled through grass to get to this tiny little, I don't know, like five, six inch brown trout but i saw him he was feeding upstream and i knew if i came in clumsy he'd see my shadow something disrupted and he'd be gone no chance and it's 15 minutes before they'll hit again so i belly crawled and then roll cast in front of him and i caught this fish what yeah i'm assuming you don't do that when you fish for bass no i don't fish for bass so i don't know no but there's a guy today that he's a local youtube guy like there's nobody that does youtube any anywhere around me except this one guy named ben Okay. He has a YouTube channel called Authentech, and he said, hey, do you do you fish? I was like, yeah, a little bit. I'm, I'm not great. He's like, well, I got these new robotic boats that fish for you, and you control them from afar. What? I know. And he's like, would you be interested in doing a video? We've been going back and forth, and I'm trying to figure out a way to work with him, and this actually seems like it makes sense to do a remote control boat Fisher, it's like basically jug fishing. Do you know what jug fishing is? Is that like when you take a bunch of milk jugs and throw them out there in the middle of some water and wait with lines and hooks attached to them? Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like a trot line. Only jug fishing, you just throw the jug out and you leave it there and you'll come back. Like one guy will have a bunch of jugs in his boat and he'll go out there and drop a bunch on the way out and then he'll wait a bit and then he'll come back and get them all. And then you have jugs everywhere? So this is a little remote control boat that'll actually 
dump bait in the water and chum the water up and get get them all excited, and then one or two pieces of that bait has a hook on it. This is my understanding. Now, I'm going to try to make a video with him on this because I think it's very interesting. Really? Yeah, it made, it made me think about the laws. I mean, we just get a fishing license, right? Right. But what's to keep me from making like a drone armada? <laughs> no kidding. Possum update. You're saying it's behind the shower? I'm, I, I am fairly confident, unless... You're telling me we're going to have to cut the shower telling you there's out of the house because you had someone bring me a possum. That's what you're saying right now. You requested the possum. I did not request the possum. You requested the possum. So what do we do? Tap on the shower and see if it responds? Yeah, that would work. Because it's all going to be plumbing all the way through here. We're literally about to have to cut a shower out of our house because there's a possum in it. No. Okay, you turn the lights off. Turn the lights off, why? Because it's nocturnal? I mean, I know that probably didn't work that way, but it feels like it's the right <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> Stay over here. What kind of safari animal tracking do you think we're doing here? We're, we've got a possum in, in a wall. Go back in the dark, go back in the dark bathroom that has the hole in the wall, and I'm gonna to go to the other bathroom that doesn't have a hole in the wall and see if I can get it to come out this way. So you're gonna bang on the wall and you're go you want me to listen for the possum. That's what I'm doing. Sitting in a chair in the dark. Where? You hear a cat? Shh. Outside, maybe? I hear a cat meowing, too. You heard Rupert meowing? Yeah. I heard... Show me where you heard him. I heard him right in... Um, I heard him say, meow, meow! It was outside when I was playing with Lego. Okay. So we are missing a cat and a possum. In the same house. And it was out the window. Like the, the cat was meowing when I was going out the window. Rupert! Rupert! Our life is not normal. Rupert! Grabbler. Speaking of water and fishing and stuff, I want to tell you a story. I'm all ears. Okay, so a long time ago, my mother got me a kayak for my birthday. It was a two-person kayak. We were young and, you know, just married, no kids, all that good stuff. And I said, you know what? I want to name my kayak because I think that's cool, right? So I go buy some stickers, and I'm out in the yard, and I'm putting the boat name on the kayak. It's my first boat. I get to name it, right? And so of course. I'm putting the Dawn Treader on the side, a reference to, oh. yeah, it's a good one, right? A reference to the Chronicles of Narnia book, The Dawn Treader, my favorite book of the series. Which is also the book that introduces us to... Reap a Cheap. Reap a Cheap. Yep. Who makes an appearance at the end of every one of your Smarter Everyday videos. Anyway, so I'm putting The Dawn Treader on the side of this kayak with these little stickers that are supposed to go in your mailbox. And my wife comes outside and Tara's looking at you know me putting the stickers on. She's like, what are you doing? I'm naming the boat, baby. And she's like, well... Aren't you supposed to name the boat after your wife? And I was Isn't like, how she said it. That's exactly how she, she said, said it, it, like a character in King of the Hill. Yeah, that's exactly how she said it. And <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, I, I want to name it the Dawn Treader. She's like, well, most people name it after their, you know, whatever. And I was like, <laughs> okay, okay, that's cool. Just run around inside. I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll have it named by the time you get back out. She said, like, okay, and so she runs inside, <laughs> and um, I had it named the Dawn Treader on one side. But above that, in bigger letters, when she came back out, she's like, you know, I went in and I said, all right, baby, I got the, the boat name. Do you want to come look at it? She's like, yeah. And she comes back out and uh, in real big letters on the side of the boat, I had labeled it the bickering nag. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? What? 
<laughs> what? Why would you say that into a microphone? Because <laughs> it's amazing. What? It's amazing. You like her. I do. A lot. Is that not the best? You'd name... No, that's not the best story or the best boat name. That's horrible. Dude, it's amazing. And so, Wait, this is this is Tara who you're still married yeah, to. Yeah, the one I'm married to. And like the And you've just been married the one time. We've got four babies, man, after this event. Wow. Yeah. How did you patch that up? Well, it's just it's just so funny. Like it's just, I mean, <laughs> Did she, she laugh? <laughs> yes, she did. She saw it oh, and I was I, like, I named it after you, baby. And she looks and it says the bickering nag. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. Yes. And that's like a testament to a good marriage, you know. We can have a good laugh about it. But to this day, we still say, like, hey, do you want to go watch the fireworks? Yeah, who's got the nag right now? Oh, I think we've got it. Did John Henry ever bring it back? Yeah, we've got the nag and the banana hammock. And, you know, we, we name all You named the other one the banana hammock? It's, that's my, my brother-in-law's. It's a big yellow kayak. We call it the banana hammock. Yeah, it's the right name. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to tell you that wow. story. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, I, one, I secretly love that you did that. Two... I also not secretly love that you know the rhythm of how to badger your wife and that she knows the rhythm of how to badger you so well that you knew that joke would work. It's awesome. Because that's one of those jokes where if it don't work, oh yeah, there will be consequences. <laughs> but it makes for like a lifelong story. It's fantastic. Oh, and that's how, isn't that how offensive humor works in general though? If it's offensive, <laughs> but it's really genuinely funny, nobody cares. It's, what's really, truly offensive is offensive and not funny. That's true. That's true. It, that's just like mean. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, that's it. It's, <laughs> okay. Your turn again. A bold move. All right, I got one. Possum update. You found Rupert? Yeah. Where is he? Where's he at? He's in the, the down spot. Here, hold this. Okay, he's probably very hot. Yeah. We're, so we're going on four days. And there's a hole. I, he just came up to it. So he's... But he... he hold he, this. All right. Okay. Rupert. Come on, Rupert. Look at you. Come hey, on, buddy. can you fit? Oh, come on out, dude. He's fat. Search for the possum to save the cat. Okay, so we've recovered one <laughs> one of our missing animals. <laughs> Give him some water. Uh, yeah. So I'm thinking <laughs> we put out a corn dog tonight at like nine o'clock. A literal corn dog. Yes, that's how it got its name. We got to build a possum trap. We got to make it so he can come out but not go back in. Oh, I gotta call you. I gotta go back. He smells the pepperoni. He totally smells it. You and I have discussed before that I make playlists on Spotify that are named only the year that the playlist was made and that I just fill it with music that I found that year. And I think you told me that you do the same thing. Is that true? Well, I did it after you told me you do that. Oh, okay. Because if I remember how you explained it, you said... As you discover new music that year, you put it in the, for example, 2018 playlist, and then you can go back in the future and play that playlist, and it'll take you back to that time in your life. Yep. Is that true? That's exactly why I do it. And it's really fun, too, because as the kids learn the music, it becomes part of their growing up story, too. Yeah, so I've, I've got two years under my belt after you taught me that, but we haven't really compared notes on that for a while. Okay, well, that's exactly what I wanted to do. I was wondering what you've come across in the last year, because we haven't talked, and you and I have not talked music a bit since we talked with Leonore, like, has it been a year already? I think so, Probably yeah. almost a year ago. So, yeah, it's exactly my question. What have you found in the last year, whether recent or otherwise, that is, got into your veins a little bit? This is fun. Okay, so... um, I think my favorite song right now 
is by a guy named Andy Grammer. Have you ever heard of that guy? I have. I think he's like a, I don't know, he's kind of the thing right now. I don't really know. But it's called 85. Have you heard of that? Uh, No, but I can pull this up while we talk. 85 spelled out or just the number? It's just the number 85, 85. The chorus is, I don't want to be 85 saying, I've got a big house, but my heart is ugly. And I don't want to be 85 thinking I missed it because I was chasing money. That's that's the chorus. It's really, really good. And I like to... Wow. I'll, yeah, it's really solid. And I like to play that around the kids because it's got a good beat. It's got some you know clappy stuff going on. And it has a really good message too. So it's called 85 by Andy Grammer. And it's talking about the importance of relationships and things like that as opposed to working all the time, which is something I need to hear. Respectfully, yes. You go hard, and it serves you really, really well. But I think it's cool that a song like that, that effectively pushes back on your lifestyle, is a song you really resonate with. Oh, yeah. It's great, man. You gotta listen to it. Okay. Any others? Uh, let me see. There's this guy that I discovered. His name is Andrew Peterson. I have heard that name. So I met him like face to face. I went to... Oh, so it's that kind of discovery. Yeah. Yeah. I was at this play in Nashville and someone that worked on VeggieTales recognized me and said, oh, you're that guy. I was like, yeah. And he introduced himself as the guy that worked on that stuff. I was like, that's cool. He goes, let me introduce you to this guy, Andrew Peterson. And uh, I was like, oh, great. I had no idea who it was. No idea. He's like, yeah, yeah, he, he does music and all that good stuff, and he walks over there, and he's like, okay, hey, Andrew, this is Destin. Destin, this is Andrew, and I have no context whatsoever. And I'm like, oh, cool, yeah, you're the you're the, the music guy. <laughs> I think I literally said that. You're the... Who you're the, I was just told about. You're the music guy. He's like, yeah. Turns out he's like a super successful author. He writes all this amazing music. But anyway, he's got this song called Rocket, and obviously I like Rocket's. And I, I had never watched an actual launch, but I really like this song. It's kind of like flowery and stuff like that. And Trent and Trevor make fun of me for liking this song because I would play it when they're in the car. And so now they, I know they do this. They send it to each other behind my back as a joke. <laughs> they're like, hey, Trent. Okay, that's too far. Hey, here's this song that's great. You should listen to it for the 50th time. I guess I just kind of wore it out around them. And so it's kind of a joke. So if you get the song Rocket sent to you, you have to listen to it. But I actually really okay. like it. It's very inspiring because it's it's about a dad that takes two of his kids to a rocket launch. And it, you know they say it's going to shake, shake and groan and shake your bones and the earth's going to move. It's just really cool. I like it a lot. So it's almost as though it's hurtful when you encounter something that's beautiful and then other people make fun of you for it. No, not at all. It's it's talking about the wonder and majesty of this. You Really? You can't concede that? No, I can't at all. Sometimes stuff just makes people squishy in their hearts a little bit and you, you just got to respect that? No, I, I don't get affected like, like you do about things like that. It just rolls off my back and I laugh it off. Kind of like my wife and the bickering nag thing. <laughs> no. You I'm, outmaneuvered me again. <laughs> what about you? What, what's some, some music that you like? Well, one I think I've told you about. It's a YouTube girl. Her name is Natalie Taylor. Oh, yeah. We have talked about this, right? Yeah. What's the name of that song? You, But she's not on Spotify, is she? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She is. The song is called Control. Yes. Yes. I have no idea how I came across this song. I think I was just on the YouTube app and it came up as suggested. So thanks, algorithm. And it is, I don't know, it just looks like a kid, I mean, 20 something or whatever. And she's in maybe her living room and she walks up to the microphone as the music kind of starts to play. And I've seen a lot of videos of people putting music they wrote that they're passionate about on the internet and you know, people try hard, and every now and then it's good. But you kind of get a sense of whether or not it's going to be good. She steps up to the mic and just crushes this. Oh, it's good. And I think she's doing it live. It's wonderful. It's really, really good. Yeah, I dig it. And I'm a huge fan of there being a big gap between the low and the high in a song. I've just discovered that Pandora must know this about me too, that if there's a really driving, pulsing beat or, or bass line, and then a tenor voice or a female voice, that works for me. And, and it's that kind of song. I think it's really cool. 
and I saw the thing and it had like, I don't know, 10, 12,000, maybe 20,000 views when I watched it. I mean, have you ever seen a YouTube video where you're like, uh, this is, this has to blow up. Yeah. This is so good. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was my experience. So I've liked that one. How many views does it have now? I have no idea, but you know who does know? The internet. The internet. Let's find out. How are you doing, Natalie? Oh, this came out in 2015. 121,000. We're getting somewhere with it then, but that is not nearly as far as I expected that to have come. No, it's it's better than that. She only has 35,000 subs, man. That's crazy. Oh, here's some guy commenting on this. This is my go-to song right now. Great work. That's a really nice logo that guy has, too. Oh, it's me. <laughs> she didn't I was about reply. to say, I don't see that. Yeah, it only shows up because it's me. No one upvoted it. Not even my mom. So I really like Control by Natalie Taylor. Have you ever listened to anything by Muse? I have, but I can't remember anything right now. Like, like I just I remember enjoying it, but I don't know what it is. So clearly it affected me. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. They're like Queen, but now, really, a ton of their stuff is really reminiscent of Freddie Mercury, the whole Queen thing. It's, it's ambitious and a little bit orchestral, and they sing about weird stuff. Well, they sing about resisting the establishment and things that a libertarian would like, so that resonates with me. But <laughs> you, they just put out a new one. You music based on, like, political stuff? Yeah, a little bit, I guess. Doesn't everybody, a little bit, like the songs that are really like your heart songs, in some way resonate with what you believe or think about the world? Yeah, I guess so. Seems like that Andrew Peterson Rocket song, I mean... I'm not not trying to hold up a mirror too much, but it could be argued that that is sort of reflective of things you value deeply. It's an excellent excellent point, Whitman. Thanks. Conceded. Thanks. Okay, cool. Uh, Are you calling me that, or are you saying you are doing that? Yeah, I'm doing that, totally. Okay, you concede. Okay, cool. Um, (laughs) Point, Whitman. So, yeah, just everything is this really aggressively composed, but melodically delivered pushback against things that people think are normal. And so I, I like that, but they have this new song called Dark Side, uh-huh. and there's a video with it, and dude l- drives a Lamborghini through a 1980s video game to get away from a giant skeleton monster while singing about resisting the government. <laughs> so... I was good up until the end. Like, yeah, that's going to work for Lamborghini me. <laughs> skeleton monster, and then you, I, I was up to... Let me tell you the song, though, the, one, the only one that matters right now. Okay. By Steve Martin... And the Steep Canyon Rangers, it's called On the Water. That's the That guy's spectacular. That is the only song you need to know about in 2018. It is, uh, you know, he's really good at banjo, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, phenomenal. Steve Martin, On the Water. I read his book, by the way, Born Standing Up. Have you ever read that? Huh. Fan- but you did mention to me once that you read it. Really, really good. Anyway, On the Water by Steep Canyon Rangers and uh, Steve Martin. It gives you the feel that... You're a child at the at the the front of a boat, and the sun's going down, and you're moving over the water, and the water's rushing underneath you, and you don't really know where you're going, but you can feel the wind in your face, and you know you're going on this path of exploration, and adventure is in front of you. That's the feel that the song. I mean, it has this really big bass line. It's amazing. I think you'll like it. Isn't it wonderful when a song creates a feel? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's really good. There's lots of stuff that, these are the words I wanted to sing. These are the chords I know. Now I will sing the words toward you. Surprise, it was a speech disguised as a song. But when they put the effort into creating an environment, a, a like almost a nostalgia for something you've never experienced before. Like, have, have you ever heard Billy Joel's Down Easter Alexa? I probably have. I just don't know the words. And I sail my down Easter Alexa. Blah, blah, blah. Fishing fish in the sea. Does, I don't know. Something like. Does it have anything about like sneaking up on fish behind bushes or anything like that? No, that would be stupid. It's deep sea fishing. Oh, there okay. No, got there it. No Sorry. bushes. My bad. But it's really moving and sad and deals with like death and loss and also sacrifice for your family and love. And I've never been like a commercial deep sea fisherman it's just a beautiful really effective song as is 
Delta Rays Run. You oh, ever heard of Delta Rays? Yeah, you, you turned me on to that one a while back. That was oh, really good. Giving away all of the goodies. Yeah, dude, you just forget that you told me this stuff. It's good. I guess. I, we talk a lot. I mean, it's what happens when you're friends. So you like it? You, did you put that on your 2018? Uh, yeah, I think so. I sure did. Nice. But I also put some old stuff on there. Like, do you... Tell me what. Uh, I mean, Puff the Magic Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see that coming. Have you ever listened to the remastered version of Puff the Magic Dragon with your kids in the I car? heard a rumor it was about marijuana and the the people who smoke the marijuanas. Have you ever listened to it? Puff the Magic Dragon? Yeah. Yes, I've listened to Puff the Magic Dragon. So sometimes the kids will say, Daddy, turn a song on. And the thing is, my dad played that song for me when I was a kid. And, and you turned out fine. I turned out fine. And... It just took me to this place of, oh man, you know, this little kid and he's got this imaginary dragon that he's playing with and all this stuff, whatever. Think think that it's w- about whatever you want. I don't care. But for me, it's about a child okay. and his imagination and, you know, one day losing that, you know, he kind of grows up a little bit. And so I play this for the kids and I've noticed the first couple of times they made fun of me a little bit when I played it. But now when it's it's dark outside and we're on the way home, and I'll just turn it on, and I'll grab my kid's hand, whoever's in the passenger seat. I'll just hold their hand, and we'll listen to Puff the Magic Dragon. And it, I can tell that they're listening to the words, and that it's, they're taking it in, and they're feeling things. And it's this thing that they do with Dad that we don't have to have words. We just kind of experience it. It's really cool. I like it. Did you ever see the, the video growing up? Uh, There's a cartoon video that went with that. Uh, I know there was a, there was a Disney movie called Pete's Dragon. No, that's Pete's Dragon. Yeah. That'll make a grown man cry. No, I've never seen the 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 video. Buff the Magic Dragon. It's from that era of animation that looks like that terrible animated version of the Lord of the Rings, kind of mixed with Schoolhouse Rock. Okay. But for me as a kid, that was still good enough. Yeah. And so honestly, it, what you're saying about it being a heartfelt song for children. That's how I grew up thinking about it, and I really liked that little cartoon that also made me feel things in my heart. Yeah. There was a song that made you feel things in your heart that you were asking me about the other day. What was it? I don't remember. Oh, it's on the tip of my brain, because we looked for it, and you said it was a 90s song, and it wasn't. It was an 80s song, and it oh. was The Bangles. Oh. It was Eternal Flame by The Bangles. Is this burning? <laughs> Close your eyes. No, that's not. That's not it. Me your hand, wasn't it? No, that's the one I thought it was. Hold on. Oh, that doesn't make you feel things, though. It does make me feel things, but the, oh god, hold on. Yeah. So this was something that you and your college roommate would have come on, and then you would feel things in your hearts. Hold on, I'm gonna find this. Okay. By the way, uh, there's a song by Audrey Assad called "How Can I Keep from Singing," that will melt your brain. Her voice is so pure; it's in, it's insane. Okay. Found it. What was it? It is Stay. Stay, I Miss You by Lisa Loeb and Nine Stories? Yes, that's it. Whoa. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, you I mean, I think say it, uh, I only hear what I want to. to. <laughs> Don't listen hard. Something, something. Yep. Yep. Anyone I know the one. in here. That made, that made me, you feel things? That made me feel weird things as like a prepubescent boy. I was like, what? what's this? Why do I feel weird? <laughs> you mean like Jessica Rabbit did to the rest of us? Except that makes sense? No, not at all. No. Uh, okay. You say. It just made me feel weird. I don't know why. Okay. No, that's all right. That's what Circles in the Sand by Belinda Carlisle did to me. So I can work with it. <laughs> what I can work we? with it. No judgment. What we're doing is a great segment right now. This is why there's a grabbler, and I'm glad this is happening. Uh, this is a great segment? Are you kidding me? This is gold. <laughs> this is like A++++. plus plus plus. Like fool's gold? Yeah. Like iron pyrite? No! <laughs> it's not like iron pyrite at all. This is the real deal. Because I don't know, music matters, man. And I always feel like you don't think so quite as much as I think so. I don't know. I just think music I like matters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like like Stay by Lisa Loeb in Nine <laughs> Stories. Possum update. I want to be clear about what's happening. We're luring a possum out of the wall with pepperonis. He's almost there. He's almost there. Hey, corn dog. 
Do you like pepperonis? Again, I will remind you that I asked you to marry me and you had the option of saying no. I would also like, yes, I agree. I'd also like, for the record, I just found the possum and the cat. Well done. <laughs> well done. My life would be boring without you and your life would be a mess without me. <laughs> no. So there's a big story here about marriage and the importance of it. All right. Cool. Thanks, corn dog. That was an adventure. <sighs> corn dog. You are one ugly thing. That was an honest to goodness adventure. Is that all this poop? Uh, I don't know what that is. Grabbler. So here's the deal with the possum. Okay. As you heard through all this audio that we played throughout the episode here for the third chair. Mm-hmm. We found the possum in the wall. So the way this... That's big news. <laughs> it's big news. So the way this went down is this guy brings a possum over to the house. He's like, hey, here's a possum. I explained all that earlier, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there was a hole in the wall where the toilet was because I had to do some plumbing back there. And so the sheetrock was off, and I thought there was insulation up in there, but... Uh, Somehow, we figured out how the possum got out. He had this little trash can that he was sitting in like Oscar the Grouch. He got on that thing and then kind of leaned out real far and touched the edge of the, the tub there and climbed over this little plywood wall we had made. And he climbed... Oh, clever. Yeah, it's a clever little thing. And then he... It's almost like they're built for climbing. And then he went over to that hole in the wall and then just climbed up in there because it was dark and was just chilling out. And he was so quiet, we couldn't find him. And so we started looking around, looking around for like a long time. We we're like, well, he must have got out somehow. He's not in here. And I got my phone and I put it on, you know, selfie mode and got a flashlight and looked up under there, didn't see the possum. It's like, well, he's not in the wall. So we started walking around outside. And all of a sudden, my wife screams, I hear meowing. And that's big news because Prince Rupert. That's not a possum sound at no. all. No. Prince Rupert's been gone for four days. Ooh. And so I'm like, w really? Where? And she's like, it's over here in the wall. I'm like, what the heck? I mean, that's a completely different wall on the outside of the house. What's the deal? And so we went outside to listen at the wall. And we were like tapping on the wall and we hear the meowing again. And the cat was in the drainage pipe in the ground. What? Which way was he facing? Did he go in through the ground or did he go in through the roof? So we've got this gutter in the backyard, and the backyard is slightly elevated from the front yard, and so the gutters go straight down into this black corrugated pipe, which is buried and goes all the way to the front yard, and that's where all the water goes. Well, apparently the cat went into the pipe in the front yard and was like chasing a mouse or something and went all the way to the back of the house and couldn't back up, could not figure out how to back up. And so Prince Rupert stayed in that gutter for four days. Oh. Uh, I know. Okay, don't get me wrong. Cats are stupid. I'm not a real <laughs> big fan of Rince Poopert because of all of the unprovoked attacks on my ankles at night. Yeah. But I sort of still like him, and I definitely wouldn't wish that on him. What was he like when you got him out? He was happy. Wait, no, first, how did you get him out? I just took it apart. I just took the gutter and the pipe apart. Not a big deal. You know, no tools necessary. Just popped it all loose. Okay. Got him out. We went and gave him a bath. Everything was great. Next day, we let him outside again. He went back in there, did it again. So, oh I'm goodness. obviously, I mean, cats are dumb. Curiosity killed the cat. I'm going to have to figure that out. Anyway, long story short, we found the cat. Okay, so the, that was great. And, and the possum is in the wall the whole time? The possum was in the wall, in the bathroom the whole time. He was just hiding really, really well. And so... I'm like, what the heck? So he, he sought out somewhere dark. Exactly. So we turned the light off. If only you had somebody in your life to tell you that possums like darkness. If only I had somebody in my life that could tell me that. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. Why is, mm -hmm. that, why is that funny? 
Did you tell me that? Because I told I told you that earlier. Oh, you did tell me that. Okay, got it. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. How did you get him out of the, the wall? Pepperoni. Possums like pepperoni. <laughs> I thought he liked corn dogs. He does like corn dogs. Her name is Corn Dog. But we went to the fridge. We got some pepperoni. Her, and we, we held it out. And then she just climbed straight out of the wall. And then I grabbed her. And uh, we built a better wall that time. And then let her go that evening. Okay, a couple of things here. Yeah. One, is this the toilet that's in the little bathroom behind your office? Yes. So the one that was leaking while I was there that I took apart with intention to fix the day we left and never fixed? Yes, exactly. The the toilet you put in the tub? Yes, that's the one. I put it in the tub for you as a gesture of friendship. Yeah, and so I, I had to cut into the wall to fix the leak. So this was my fault? No, it's not your fault. I was trying to find a way to feel important in the story. Like <laughs> no, I had some no, it's not your fault at all. Okay. No. Okay. I feel good about that. It was a pretty good little adventure, though. I mean, it's not every day it's a you great have adventure. a possum loose in your house. Named Corn Dog with 13 nipples? No. And it makes you find your cat that's been gone for four days. That's pretty cool. That's a huge win. Thanks, Corn Dog. <laughs> Thanks, Corn Dog. One last question. Mm-hmm. How did Trent respond to getting his cat back? It was a big deal. I thought he was going to cry. <laughs> He loves that cat. That makes me happy. So um, I also took video of the possum when we found it. I had a camera going, and so I would love to leave that up on the uh, leave that up on the the Patreon site for the patrons. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I saw your video of you creeping up on the possum in the tub. <laughs> it was weirdly cute. I know they're really cute. It's like a dirty little panda. I know, like an evil little prehensile tailed creeper finger panda they're cute you got time to talk about one more thing sure all right i got one more thing how did you get at history nugget on twitter there's a guy that um his name is mikey lord on twitter and i contacted him straight up and i was like hey dude i mean we would really like to use at history nugget for this thing we're doing and a long time ago he had used it in one of his history classes, and he was like posting jokes and stuff on there. And so I just asked him straight up. I was like, "Hey, man, can we have it?" And he was like, "Uh, well, I mean, it's kind of a thing." And I was like, "You know what? I get that, and I also know that you have a band called As Sirens Fall, and you don't have the URL for that. And I will totally get the URL for you, and also the URL for your name. Blah blah blah. Can we work a trade?" And he was completely cool about it, dude. Completely cool about it. Mikey Lord's his name. I love Internet Goodwill. Yeah. And the name of his band is As Sirens Fall, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let me pull it up. So I, it's assirensfall.com. Okay. And I know that because I help him set that up. But he's the, he's the lead singer of this band. He's got good vocals, man. And I think it would just be really cool if people just thanked him for giving that to us. If anybody here in the third chair would be willing to do that because he was cool and he didn't have to be. And I like that. Okay. And I was sandbagging a little bit here, which is code for pretending I didn't know when I sort of did know. Cause I actually went and looked up some of his stuff and in keeping with our music discussion from earlier, this is one of the bands I've discovered this year. It's actually worth your time. Not like internet nice worth your time. Like they're good and it's worth your time. And you can all okay. I found it on Twitter. It's at as sirens fall. So that was pretty straight through the front door. Pulling up the YouTube. Yeah, and his Twitter account is Mikey Lord ASF for Mikey Lord as sirens fall. I don't know. I just thought it'd be cool if we just said thank you because it's really cool. He didn't have to do this, but he did. I always get nervous about comparing people's bands to other bands I like because every band is unique and that never feels great but i don't know i got to give this some context to me it sounds like a modern take on like late 90s early 2000s cool edgy punk infused kind of rock like uh afi do you ever listen to afi back in the day no who's that uh a band that was cool like as sirens fall no again mikey if you listen to this and you hate afi and don't want to be compared to them I'm super sorry. I'm a music idiot, but I listened to that uh, Lily song that you put out this spring, and it's legitimately good. So we'll link that in the, the, the show notes as well. And just a big thanks to someone who had something that, that we wanted 
and he could have just not done anything, but he's like, you know what? You can have it. That's just a cool person. So, yeah. Thanks, Mikey. No kidding. And also, you used the word we twice in reference to History Nugget, and that is kind of the explanation for the delay in making History Nugget happen, is we've kind of reformatted our thinking on that because you're going to jump in with me on this. Totally, dude. I am all in. I would love to. I'm excited about that. Yeah, me too. It gives you an excuse to get to go on the YouTubes and talk about things other than science or science from a very different angle. Well, I mean, if it's history, it's anything that happened when? (laughs) Before now. Before now. And so, like, you can talk about, I don't know, I've got several things I want to talk about, specifically to do with military history, and those are the things that get me excited. Learning how things were discovered or scientific principles that were developed and all that kind of stuff. So we are both going to be on camera, even though we live in different parts of the country. And we're going to keep these things short and tell the history of stuff you didn't know you wanted the history of. I need to work on that tagline, but that's pretty close, right? Something like that. Yeah. So we've been working on this spreadsheet and are we still not going to tell people what's on the spreadsheet? Cause we don't, we don't want people to steal our super awesome ideas. No, we'll, we'll totally get scooped. We don't want to do that. We'll get scooped. They're yeah. fun ideas. Yeah. But here's what I was thinking. What if we made some semi-permanent thread over on r slash NDQ? And if anybody has an idea for something that they didn't know they wanted the history of until it occurred to them that they wanted to know the history of it, they can just go over there and suggest it. And that way we can make videos that users thought of the idea for. Okay. Users, listeners. <laughs> yeah, I Whatever. just accused everyone of using drugs. Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, this is awesome. And I think in order for this to work properly, we're going to have to... Okay, I'll give you an example. The history of nuclear weapons, for example, or things that happened in World War II and they, you know, d- technologies that were developed. I think that's interesting. I think so, too. The history of radar. Oh, my gosh, man. That's amazing. You know what else is interesting? What? The history of graham crackers. Yes. Do you know why it's interesting? I do. (laughs) I do know why. (laughs) Because it's an erotic suppressant meant to keep young men from spilling their life fluids and thus shortening their lives. Enjoy those s'mores. (laughs) Things like that. I mean, I think that's fascinating. Um, I was at the, uh, the football game, University of Alabama, last weekend. And there's this little, I think they call it a plinth. I don't really know what that I, word you're means. You're talking about a person who organizes financial transactions between people who want to... There was some sort of pimp flying over... Plinth. P-L-I-N-T-H. It says... Plinth? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I said it wrong. I said it wrong. I mean, I said it correctly. Yeah, you did, but... Yeah, no. University of Alabama. The plinth... This plinth identifies the southeast corner of Madison Hall. Okay, so you're talking about like a little stand, like a, a little marker thing. Yeah, a building that was oh, burnt it. by the Union Union soldiers. Okay. Whoa, cool. seriously? Yeah. So Wow. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Real? And so it'd be really cool just to have a camera and be like, hey, here's the history of the plinth. That time this thing happened. Yeah. But it has to be fun stuff too. Yeah. We can do cool things like things that blow things up. I love military history, so I'm all over that. But I think we should do stupid, silly little things that are items you'd never think about in life. Stories you'd never think about. Internet memes. Yes. Yes. I have questions about those. Some of them I was there for and I know exactly how they happened and some I don't. Whatever the case, this is going to be fun. So we're going to make a thread on r slash NDQ. Give us your history nugget ideas. Is that what we're doing here? Roger that. That's exactly what we're doing here. Dunsies. Dunsies. Just a note, we're going to do the book, How to Think, by what's his name? Alan Jacobs. That's the next episode. We're going to do that, so go use your Audible code, audible.com slash NDQ, and go get that. Word? Word. You want to know one other thing that's really important? What? The chinchilla is named Qui-Gon Chin. <laughs> that happened. Excellent. It's been really hard to adapt because there's no there's no short version of that name. Quaggy. It's just Qui Gon Chin, dude. Just you just it. gotta say it every time, yeah, don't just you? Just say it. Yeah, that's what it is. 
you know what? He doesn't respond well to it. Like there's been a distance emotionally between he and I since we changed his name. <laughs> we used to open the little cage and he'd come over and he'd wiggle his little nose at me. And then boing, 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 he'd hop down through that cage like lightning fast and then bounce over into my lap. And I may pet him on his little chin and stuff. He doesn't do that anymore. He's probably tired of your freaking fishing stories is what it is. Oh, oh crap. God. Oh, you've gone too far. That came out. That bubbled out from somewhere we... deep in my soul, didn't it? <laughs> I'm excited to see what our friendship looks like after this episode. <laughs> <laughs>